We don't need to get into that. And then we get into the action tracker stuff. Okay. I, <laughs> my brain, in, clearly in I no didn't read mark. this correct because I was confused as shit. Yeah, so now. here's the thing though, Isaiah. I was confused too. I had to reread it and I watched the video and I saw someone else talking about it and then I got it. So <laughs> Jesus, that's bad. <laughs> to be very clear, this is how it works. The action tracker hits the table anytime the GM feels like it is going to be an extended combat, which is to say, you know, more than one or two rolls, right? Okay. GM's like, all right, the players are fighting the boss dragon. Action tracker hits the table. Obviously, the fight with the dragon isn't going to be resolved in a single roll. Players. All right. Uh, trackers down. The dragon begins to lumber towards the, the four of you. What do you do? Players begin doing their various actions to attack the dragon. Player one says, I do X, Y, and Z. Okay. Action token goes on the action tracker. Player two does X, Y, and Z. Token goes on the tracker. Player three does something. Token goes on the tracker. Player four does something. Token goes on the tracker. There are now four tokens on the action tracker. The GM says, okay, I am going to now spend tokens to make the dragon do something. Because it's a boss dragon and he can do multiple moves in a row, I'm going to spend three tokens to have him do three different actions. So one of them's an attack. One of them's like he flies up and grabs somebody. One of them, he, you know, whatever, tail swipe, doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, once the GM has gone through the tokens that they have used, the players then essentially get the initiative back and can start doing stuff also. The GM yeah. can also kind of basically the GM can also interrupt them partway through by using fear to generate themselves some tokens and also stop the players. Basically, you could spend two fear by and the two fear would interrupt a player and then also give you two action tokens to do something with the monster. That is how that works. Mm. I see. So we're planning Te on doing a, a, a like a, a small thing for this. You're going to yeah. have to explain this then because I, I got it. But, but you like, don't got kinda. it. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. I know, I get it. Uh, if you watch the one shot that they ran, it, it might help a little bit, but yeah. Basically, the idea is the, the sort of the, the sort of mechanical design concept is that every time a player does something that gives the GM some ammo that they have in their back pocket to do something in return in the future. And the idea is mm -hmm. supposed to be that if you think about it in a sort of cinematic fashion, the camera is focused on all the cool stuff the players are doing, and then the camera goes, okay, now it's the villain's turn, and we focus on the villain for a little while. And the tokens are the way that the GM keeps the camera focused on the villain and lets the villain, uh, you know, be a, be the aggressor. Mm. It, it, it is a... it. The game says that it's not, but, like, it's an initiative system. <laughs> I... So I just want to... Because I, I don't know if you guys watched... Uh, there was a video of, uh, I forgot what the fuck, the YouTube channel. I, I posted D20 Combat yeah. where they were comparing the MCDM game initiative versus the Dagger Heart initiative versus just regular 5e initiative. Uh -huh. And after listening to all that, and it's like, man, I, I really, I don't understand why people have such a hate boner for basic D&D initiative. Okay. I get it if you want to do something different like, oh, you just go around the table if you're playing in, you know, physical or for like if you're playing digitally, the MCDM version of like, okay, all the players go and then the bad guys go and then the players go. It's like for me, it's like I don't like that because like they, you know, they, I, the players are either going to supernova, which you know, then for a later combat, sure, that, that might work out more in my favor, but for that one fight, I don't get a turn. I remember, the DM's a player, too. And then for Daggerheart, it also kind of seems like there are instances where DM's might not just get a turn to do anything. 
Okay. Granted, it's probably uh, not likely because it's not likely. Yeah. It's not likely because more players can probably roll. Someone's gonna roll fear. It's literally 50 50. Right. Someone's gonna Someone's roll gonna fear. Roll fear. But, and and also remember those middling successes are still an opportunity for you to do kind of something. True, but it's also then it seems like it's such a for Daggerheart the biggest thing is it's such a disorganized mess. It is. Yes. Because it's like, well, who goes? I don't know. I was near the monster. So I guess well, I'll go. Okay. And then it's like, well, why not <laughs> go right. around the table? And then it's like, oh, no, we can't do that. And it's like, OK, how about who has the highest agility? Oh, we can't do that. Cause it's right. like, do, hold on, do. hold on, hold on, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Matt, 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 Matt. Yeah. I, I yeah. feel like you are getting the wor- <laughs> This is the thing that frustrates you. People are going to look at this and think that a game that doesn't have an initiative system doesn't work. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this one doesn't work. No, no, I know. Because this here's this is what annoys me. This is what annoys me about this game. This problem was already solved. Dungeon World, Apocalypse World, Blades. None of those have initiative systems. They mm. already solved this problem. When the player does a roll, the enemy reacts to the roll. It's a one-to-one basic back and forth. If... So, mm. I was gonna I was gonna talk about I was gonna bring this up later, but there's a there's a section a little bit further down that that um, talks about uh, the act. It does a summary on the action tracker system. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Move. So, the move system exists already in Apocalypse Room. What are you? I you can literally scroll down and see my notes. I literally wrote. What is the point of having me spend action tokens to activate enemies when the failure or partial success of a move should already dictate that? It feels like an extra step that will give the GM confusion with no clear benefit. And to give you an example, I literally copied and pasted how it works in Dungeon World. This is the fra- this is the the move hack and slash in Dungeon World. This is what it says. And hack and slash is your sort of primary way that you would like attack a monster, right? When you attack an enemy, roll with plus strength. On a 10 plus, you deal your damage to the enemy and avoid their attack. At your option, you may choose to add an additional d6 of damage, but expose yourself to the enemy attack. On a 7 to 9, you deal your damage to the enemy, and the enemy makes an attack against you. Done. If you fail the roll, you don't get to do shit diddly, and the enemy gets to slap your shit around because that's implied by the move system already. Mm. I I kind of feel like this is... Uh, Josh, you, you'll you know this because you also read the Aragon books as a kid. Uh-huh. Uh, that's like uh, the, people comparing Aragon to like knock off Lord of the Rings and Star Wars and then <laughs> by the fourth book, he went, fine, fuck it, I'm going to write my own book. And it was completely different. And you're like, oh. Um, this kind of feels like they are like ripping from all these tabletop, these other games. But trying games, to do their own thing. And then... In the last minute, they're like, fine, we'll make our own rules. Yeah. And I'll have blackjack and hookers. Yeah. And then it actually doesn't. Kind of. But like, weird, weird analogy, but I see where you're going with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the, the dungeon world, like the dungeon world hack and slash move already tells you what you need to do. If the character rolls a 10 plus, which is a complete success, they attack the enemy and face no repercussions. If they roll a seven to nine, they face repercussions. It's built in. Boom, bang, boom. The GM doesn't need to spend any points or use a resource or anything. The GM simply narrates. All right. You know, fighter, you attack the goblin. The goblin attacks you back. That's it. What? Why? Why does Daggerheart? Because Daggerheart already uses the move system for other stuff. Why doesn't it just use that for combat? Because it like this action token thing i don't i don't see what the like i don't see how it's making the game any better you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's just it's just like not i just don't get it. i just don't see i just don't see i don't know i don't necessarily i i, I think they i guess what it is is they tried to solve a problem that wasn't a problem is kind of what it feels like like it feels like they invented yeah. a problem to then solve the problem <laughs> Yeah, it's the same yeah, with combat. It, it does kind of feel like I'll go for, go for it. we don't want to do normal initiative. We want to do it our way, the better way. And then you're kind of like, is it though? Yeah, but it's not. 
It's and like, then, you, you, yeah. For, <laughs> do you know what this feels like, genuinely? Mm -hmm. It's like, we don't like algebra. And then uh -oh. they invented calculus. You know, it's like... <laughs> Shit, yeah. <laughs> there's what? just like there's no universe where this is a more streamlined situation than either D and D's uh, initiative or uh, yeah, D and D's uh, uh, fucking power by the apocalypse is like freeform system or like we said last time the Genesis system somewhat freeform. You roll your initiative, but then it becomes the players get to choose how when and they act. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, we could we could spend hours on different initiative systems, so I'm not going to necessarily go down that rabbit hole. I just think this just feels like a weird over designy mess and it should probably get thrown out. Um, but it's probably not going to because it's pretty baked into the game at this point. I also want to point out a little thing uh, that I made a note of. Uh, it says in the action tracker system that the presence of the action tracker doesn't have to mean violence is only is the only option. But because it's kind of a pseudo initiative tracker, that's going to make players think that means it's fighty time. Right? Like mm -hmm. this is a problem people have in D&D &D, where like once the initiative hits the board, everyone assumes the only option is to fight. And so you're like, oh, the action tracker doesn't have to mean a fight, but like it kind of does mean a fight because it just kind of it's it's just how it's going to feel. That's like what it's for. So it's like, I don't know. I think that's the that's my other problem with the whole situation is that they're trying to claim they're like, our game doesn't have an initiative system, but like it does. It just it totally does. <laughs> just say don't don't just say it does. It's OK. It's okay. It's almost like you want them to do the the Obi Wan Kenobi. There's no initiative system from a certain point of view. Like right from a certain yeah exactly. So yeah, I mean that's just that's just. I if it were me, I'd throw out the action track. I throw out the action tracker system. Uh, have it operate the way Blades or Apocalypse World operates in terms of combat. And then all of the monster abilities, which we're going to get to in a minute, have those just trigger based off fear. That's it. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did make a note, and I thought this is kind of interesting. I don't necessarily know if it tells us, and I'm not now, of course, I'm not going to be able to find it probably. Um, but it mentions. Where is it? Uh, oh, here. Wait. Okay. If the attack miss no. Oh yeah. One thing that I found really weird, if you scroll to the section of attack rolls right at the top, when an adversary you're controlling attacks a PC, you'll take a number of extra character tokens equal to their attack bonus and roll them with your D20, then add everything up to get the attack roll total. I don't think that's how it actually works. I think that's some remnant of how it used to work and they forgot to take that out. <laughs> because I think what it's saying is that like if a monster has a plus three to attack, like to hit, that it costs three tokens for them to do that attack. I think that's what it's saying. What well, I, I know, I think that that might be what they're talking about because if you're fighting, let's say a dragon and a dragon is worth, or you have like a, well, I, yeah, I guess the, the idea is that you would need a certain amount of character tokens to even feel the creature of of, of high strength. Except you don't. Fair Be enough. Because later on in the book, that, that's not what it says. It says you spend one... Because monsters have an ability later on called Relentless, which is you can do multiple actions in a turn on a one-to-one -one basis. So if the monster has relentless three, you can spend three tokens in a row to have them do three actions. And I'm going to keep it a buck with you, chief. I'm, f I got no idea. I, yeah. You'll notice that's why I highlighted that section because it conflicts with later information. Uh, it's not, I don't think that's actually how it works. I don't know what they fucked up there. Something happened. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I noted that 
Um, uh, oh, and monsters also. Here's the thing, Isaiah. There are some monsters that cost multiple tokens, but they have an ability specifically for that called slow. And if a monster is slow, so if like a monster is slow too, for example, like an ooze, uh, that means it costs two tokens to activate a monster to do one move. So if they're slow four, it would cost four tokens for them to do something. So there are some monsters that do that, but they specifically call it out with the ability. Hmm. Yeah, so I think there was some sort of different remnant of the action tracker system before this that had something to do with like more powerful monsters cost more tokens to do their thing or something, which just tells me that this has already gone through a bunch of like weird iterations probably. And uh, yeah, I think the final in in I think the final iteration should be uh, in the garbage. But anyway, yeah, no, I, at yeah. this point, I don't disagree. If, if <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that the guy have pretty good like, uh, uh, I, I have a pretty like, you know decent amount of, of literacy like comprehension, and even I'm like I have no idea what the fuck this is on about. <laughs>